Welcome to episode 136 of the Fully In It podcast. So today's podcast topic is all about our homeschooling journey and how we got into homeschooling. It's actually like a really, really cool story. And also what I would recommend if you are considering homeschooling, you're thinking this might be something that aligns with your family's values and visions, or maybe you're just curious about it because you know that we homeschool and you're like, I don't know, like, how does that work? How does she do it? How does that fit in with, you know, the entrepreneur journey? I am going to spill the beans today. And this topic really came about because I got tagged, I commented actually on a reel on Instagram that ended up going viral. I mean, I think it had like over a million views or likes or however that works. Anyway, I just happened to comment because, you know, we've homeschooled for a long time and I had some opinions and thousands of people liked my comment. They came and followed me and they were asking me, can you tell me how to homeschool? Can you give me advice on how to homeschool? Can you DM me and tell me like, how do I do this? And I just kept thinking, I was like, okay, I'm not an expert on homeschooling. Like, yes, I have been homeschooling for, oh goodness, like seven, eight years at this point. So I have some experience, but I am not the guru. Like, I am, I am not the woman who is going to write books about homeschooling or coach on homeschooling. But as your friend, I would love to share just kind of what I have learned over the years. And, and who knows, maybe this will be the exact episode you were needing to listen to. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Welcome to Fully In It a show for moms who are called to grow themselves while growing their families. Join me, Kate Saffel, a life and a business coach for moms, a homeschooling mama of three, and a woman on a quest to show that our lives become even more meaningful when we remember why we are here and what truly matters most. This show is about going fully in it for you and the people you love by showing up powerfully in motherhood, entrepreneurship, in your home life, and for your family vision. Join me for weekly episodes that will inspire you to live intentionally and by your values, to slow down and truly be present to your family life, to make decisions that grow a profitable business without sacrificing anything in the process, and to become the kind of mom and woman you know you're meant to be in this lifetime. Okay, so we are officially back home. We visited my parents for nearly two weeks, and it was so lovely. Like I mentioned in my last episode, it was the exact rest and time of reflection that I was just needing to prepare myself for kicking off 2024 and finishing out this homeschooling year with my kids. So we are back home now. We are getting into the swing of our regular routine. And I noticed at the end of last week that I was feeling some dread around life getting busy again. Have you ever felt this? Like it was just this like really subtle feeling in my body of like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to go back into our normal routine. I mean, it was really nice having that break. And yet, this is our life, right? Like we have made all these choices. Everything that we do on a daily basis is very intentional. We don't do anything on default as a family. And so when I notice like a funky emotion like that come in like dread, you know, I'm going to hit my journal. I do my mindset work. This is a very important part of my process. I've created an entire program around it. And I spent some time journaling on what was coming up and doing some practical things to support myself, like just tweaking our daily schedule and making sure that it feels really good when we move through all of the different elements of our day. But then I also paired it with drinking Magic Mind, which is this awesome productivity drink. I've mentioned it before, but it is such a mood and energy booster. And I noticed that I'm actually a lot happier 
and I'm a more relaxed mom throughout the day because of the adaptogens in it that boost your mood and they help you relax. And because this drink is made with matcha, it also contains one of my favorite mood boosting compounds called L-theanine. I don't know if you've heard of it, but I have been a huge fan of L-theanine for years because it naturally helps reduce stress. So it felt kind of nice to have this to support my normal practices of the mindset journaling and doing my time blocking. And honestly, it feels a little bit like cheating because I feel so much better when I am drinking it. So if this speaks to you, I would really encourage you to also try it out. If you've been having issues with your mood, you've been feeling stressed by the demands of mom life. It truly is a game changer for us moms who are doing all of the things. The Magic Mind team created an amazing offer for me to share with you mamas. So in January only, we've got just a few weeks left. You can get one month free when you subscribe for three months. And what I love about subscribing is that you set it once and then you don't have to think about it. I keep the bottles in my fridge and then when I notice I'm starting to just get a little cranky, I'm feeling tired, I will pull one out of the fridge and then I pour it over ice and it like kicks in and I feel so much better. So if you're ready to feel happier and more relaxed in your daily life, head to magicmind.com slash J-A-N, fully in it, and that's how you're gonna get your third month free. Or you can also just use my discount code fully in it 20 and that will get you up to 56% off your first subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase if you just want to try it out. My 56% off code only lasts 10 days, so you want to make sure to use it right away. And I'm going to stick these in the show notes so that it's super easy breezy for you to go check it out, see what you think, try the subscription, and I really want to hear from you if you try it to let me know how it also helps you feel. So we are back in our homeschooling routine and a little clunky right now because, you know, it's still, it's mid-January and it takes us a little bit to get back into our routine, especially after the holidays. But we have been homeschooling now since 2015 and the way that we came to homeschooling honestly really surprised me because I was never one of those people that thought I would be a homeschool family. Like never crossed my mind. My husband and I went to public school. It was just not something that people did or like I really knew anyone who was homeschooling. But when I had my oldest daughter, I taught at the local university. I loved teaching there. I taught like an art history class and I would teach in the evenings. So it was really great because Kirk would come home from work and he would relieve the babysitter. Like we'd had a little bit of overlap there. So I'd have a babysitter come. He'd relieve her and he and my daughter would get to spend the evening together and get like some quality time. And I would get some time just feeling like an adult, right? Like I'm sure you know what I mean, like getting to teach students and have really amazing conversations. And so that was super helpful for me in early motherhood. And I would observe my students. I'm paying attention to the things that they're saying and the quality of their work. And something stood out to me very clearly. My kids who went through public school in the state I was teaching in, and I don't want to, I don't want to name names, but they're like typically uh, last or close to last when it comes to uh, testing results in public schools. And I noticed that those public school kids really struggled. They were missing a lot of important skills that I really felt at the collegiate level they should already have. It was very mystifying to me because I spent quite a bit of time trying to teach them skills that I really felt like they should have learned in high school. And part of this was shaped by the fact that the couple of years before I had my daughter, I taught at a private high school. 
And I taught high school freshmen. I taught um, world cultures and ethics, which was like such a cool class. I felt I felt so honored to be able to teach this class. But I had 14 and 15 year olds, and they were inquisitive. They were uh, like well schooled. They knew how to do things like writing essays and understanding the components of a good essay in such a way that many of my my university level students didn't have. And I really noticed that gap and I was just a bit shocked by it. And so I talked to my husband about it and we were like, you know, we're going to have to send our kids to private school. Like we just, we can't uh, send them to public school knowing what we know, seeing what the end result is. Again, like I have a toddler and then I'm, I'm teaching university level students. So I'm seeing the kind of the end of that journey and just recognizing I don't, I don't want that for my kids. If we have a choice, I want to make sure that we are giving them the absolute best education that we can. So we started touring private schools. And there were some really great ones in our city. But when we found out the cost, I thought, oh my goodness, this is an entire salary to pay. Like if we have a couple of kids, uh, one of us is going to have to work just to pay for private school. Now, at that time, again, remember, I'm teaching. I hadn't started my business yet. I I didn't really have the mindset around creating unlimited income and, and really understanding how that worked. So I felt very capped by my lowly uh, university salary that I was receiving at the time. And my husband worked in the medical field. Um, but, you know, again, private school is an investment. So two things happened. The first one is this. I had a few homeschool students come through my class, and I was blown away by them. They were bright. They were inquisitive. They were well-prepared. They held these very high-level conversations with me and had such a level of maturity that I wasn't seeing in the other 18 to 22-year-old students that I had. If this is what a homeschool student is like, like, I'm very impressed. And again, remember, we are talking in generalities. You know, not all public school education is bad. Not all private school education is good. Not all homeschool students turn out with, you know, the ideal outcomes. There are going to be differences because that's just the nature of the individualization of education. I noticed one day my daughter, again, she was probably about 18 months old, and I had all of my big art history textbooks lining the bottom of a bookcase. These were all the ones that I had studied in undergraduate and graduate school, and you know, they're filled with all of these images from art and artifacts from all over the world. And so my daughter goes over there and she starts pulling these big heavy books off the bookcase. And I'm like, hmm, what is she doing? And I'm just observing because I was really into Montessori at the time as well. So I'm just, you know, observing what she's doing. I'm not interfering. And she flips open one of the books. And for probably a good hour to two hours, she just sat and looked at the pictures quietly. She was engrossed in the images. And of course, as an art historian, I was pretty happy about that. I was like, oh, yes, like a chip off the old block. I'm watching her and I had this thought, oh, I cannot wait to take her and our future kids to museums and to monuments and to explore around the world and see all of these things. And then I felt this immediate emotion of lack and I thought, we're never going to be able to go anywhere. How are we going to be able to go there? We're going to barely be breaking even trying to pay for private school, right? And again, like the week prior, we had just put her on a wait list for private school because the city that we lived in, I kid you not, if like you weren't on the wait list by the time they were a year old, you were not likely to get in. Just sounds crazy, right? And so we had put her on the wait list and we had really like mentally committed to this idea of private school and i just thought we're not we're not going to be able to afford to travel it's going to be one or the other but then i had a light bulb moment again i'm sitting there and i'm observing my beautiful daughter and i think well what if 
we weren't spending 10, 20, 30,000 a year on private school. What if that was our travel fund? What if we were able to put all of that money into going and seeing these things in person and having the most incredible experiences together? And in that moment, I knew we had to homeschool. There was no other choice. And again, remember, I didn't really, I mean, I knew some moms who were homeschooling, but this was not really my community. But I was committed and I talked to my husband about it and he had always been interested in homeschooling. So he was like very happy about that. Uh, But it just clicked for me in that moment. So I did exactly what you would probably do in the same boat. I just started researching homeschooling like crazy. I started reading all of the books. I started asking people what their homeschool experiences were. I, I read all the blogs like, and this was, you know, This was like the early 2010s. So blogs were, you know, they were much bigger back then. And I wanted to figure out the best way to do this. And I'll be honest, I got very overwhelmed. Because if you've spent a nanosecond looking at anything homeschool related, you know that there are so many different methods and approaches that parents use to school their kids. There's lots of philosophies. There are some parents that will say like, unschooling is the best way to do it. Like this is what works. It's it's how kids are meant to learn. And then there's others that say, no, it, you know, we need to have a more rigorous approach. We need to make sure that we are hitting all the subjects. We need to kind of recreate the school day, but we're just going to do it in our own home environment. And then there's everything in between. I personally wasn't sure what direction to go. And so with my daughter, with my oldest, I just picked a curriculum And I really didn't know much about what I was getting into, but it was like one of those curriculum in a box. So, you know, you pay a flat amount and then they send you a bunch of books and materials and it was okay. I felt a lot like I wasn't doing it correctly. She would also get very frustrated. I'm like, no, but the manual says that we need to do this, 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 and this today. And she's like, I just want to go play mom. You know, she's like four or five. And again, firstborn kid, I'm thinking, we got to hit the ground running and I got to make sure you're well educated. Now, granted, I had read all of the books on like Finland's approach to education. I understood that like delayed learning is ideal for a lot of kids uh, because it just gives them that time to mature and they get more extended playtime, which just really helps with their imagination and and their learning capabilities. But still, I kind of pushed and it really backfired. It, It didn't really do her any favors because she just wasn't ready to learn at the level I was trying to teach her at. So when she was in kindergarten and first grade, I really pulled back. We did more of, you know, what you would call like an unschooling approach. We read lots of great literature. We had good conversations. We applied math and and reading skills in our daily life. But I really, you know, resisted the urge to hit that curriculum hard after I kind of burned her out on it. By the time she was in second grade, she was ready to go and We tried a few more different curriculum options. And by the time she was in, I think it was probably by the end of second grade, I found the good and the beautiful. And this has just worked very, very well for us. It's not what we're currently using. I will get to that in a moment. But it worked so well for us. And I love the approach because it essentially is like an open and closed book. You open it up. It has the part for the parent to read, and it guides you on how to teach your child. And true to its name, it is good and it is beautiful. It is a a Christian curriculum, so it's not for everyone. Uh, But I do have some friends who are not religious, and they still use it because they just really love the way it is designed and what it teaches. There are so many different forms of curriculum out there. And if you are in the boat of trying to figure out like your homeschooling journey, I really encourage you to experiment, to try different methodologies and really see what feels best for your family. So as my other two children kind of came to that schooling age, my middle daughter, you know, we use the good and the beautiful with her as well. And my youngest is 
six now. So I'm just really starting this journey with him and we're taking it quite slow. But I did get him, you know, some math curriculum. We're working on his reading skills and really just organically folding it into our daily family life. And we are not super rigid when it comes to our days. You know, we just do like a general homeschooling block from about nine to noon, depending on how much work my kiddos need or even want to get done because sometimes they want to work longer. And then we try to be done around lunchtime so that we can just relax in the afternoons, we can go to the playground. And that's really the beautiful thing about homeschooling is because you're not in a classroom with you know, 25, 30 other kids, you get things done really, really fast. Even if you have multiple kids like me, uh, it doesn't take as much time as it does for an eight-hour school day. But you may be wondering, what curriculum are we using now? Like, why aren't we using the good and the beautiful? And, And what has shifted? So last spring, I started to feel a sense of overwhelm with our homeschooling that I hadn't felt in years. I mean, it's come and gone. I I really want to be truthful with you. Homeschooling can feel challenging. It's a level of responsibility that I feel is really above and beyond like the normal parenting load because you're also acting as teacher. And it can be kind of tricky to step into that role as the parent and sometimes the child is not always on board with mom or dad being their teacher. And so it just really takes a lot of learning for everyone to come into that that agreements around we're going to do school together. So all that to say last spring, I kind of was hitting my wall. You know, my business keeps growing and I was a bit overwhelmed with everything I was doing. And on top of that, I was homeschooling completely alone. Like we didn't really have any homeschooling community. Uh, We would try to homeschool every day, but sometimes our best intentions got away from us. And I would notice, oh my gosh, a couple days have gone by and we haven't homeschooled. You know, as someone who has been an educator for a long time, that doesn't feel good. And so I reached out to a really good friend of mine and I was kind of pouring out my heart to her and she said, you know, Kate, I've mentioned this to you a few times, but I really think you should try Classical Conversations, which is a homeschooling co-op that uses the classical model of learning to teach students. And I was really resistant to this for many years. I had heard about it. I even read a book on classical homeschooling when my oldest was probably seven years old and I like got a little ways into the book and I just shut it and I was like nope this is not for us even as someone who has you know been very well educated it felt quite overwhelming to me but I really trust my friend and she had been using this model for a few years with her daughters and had really seen the benefit of it. And so I agreed to go check out one of the co-op locations near us and just see what I think. And I really fell in love with it. I was amazed at what I saw the kids learning and, you know, they're learning all these different subjects, everything from Latin to math to science to grammar, and they're memorizing all of these facts. That's like a a really big part of it because it helps set the stage for when they're older and then they go deeper into each of those areas. So they're really just laying a framework in the early years And then they expound upon it as they get older. And from my studies in art history, I knew that this was the way that people were educated in the past. You know, they would have tutors come to their home and they would learn all of these facts around the world. And then they, as they got older, they would learn how to uh, expound upon it, how to debate, how to use logic to you know, express their point. And it just really seemed like the right direction for our family. So we started doing the classical method this past fall, and we've been super, super happy with it. It has taken some adjustments in how we do homeschooling, but it has given us such a beautiful framework 
because we know what we need to work on every week. There's homework assignments. My kids have guidance from their tutors that are part of the homeschooling co-op. And it has just been so supportive to me, especially in not having to figure out everything myself, have to make a curriculum plan. Uh, I just know what to do on a weekly basis. And it helps me feel like I'm giving my kids the education that they need. And also it frees me up to excel in the other areas of my life as well. But what would I recommend for you if you are just now considering homeschooling? You're kind of like peeking in and maybe you do a Google search and you get completely overwhelmed by all of the different directions and options. And I understand because I was there. My biggest encouragement to you is to, yes, do your research, but really listen inward as you are researching all of these different philosophies. Like listen inward and see what resonates most with you, whether that's your belief system, it's your family's values, it's your own viewpoint on what you think education should really look like. This is the beauty of homeschooling is that because it is taking place at home, you have a lot more control over what your child's education looks like. And this can be a really huge blessing because, you know, maybe you noticed there were certain gaps in your education that you're like, oh, I really struggled with that as I got older. Now you can address that with your own kids. There's also the really beautiful opportunity of following their interests. You pay attention to how your child learns, what they are drawn to, and you can really foster their love of learning simply by coming alongside them and saying, hey, I noticed that you're really into mammals right now. Believe me, kids go through some really fun stages, but like I notice you're really into mammals. Let's go to the library and let's get a stack of books. What are some of your favorite mammals right now that you want to learn about? And before you know it, you know, you start with like learning about animals and then you're moving into history. Maybe you're finding some really great literature that supports it and it becomes this really natural and organic way of learning together. The other thing that I really recommend is reading high quality literature with your kids. So the Good and the Beautiful curriculum, they really describe this as books that are enriching. They give a strong character and values to the child. There isn't like petty stuff in it or shallow content, you walk away from it feeling like you learned something, you you feel good. Like those are the kind of stories that we want to be reading with our children, the really timeless one. And there are lists online you can search like, you know, best literature, best classical literature to read with your child. Look through those lists, go to your local library and just start checking those books out read them aloud with your kids. There is so much benefit to them hearing you read to them. You can read at a slightly higher level even than they can read at, and this helps to expand their vocabulary, uh, their conceptual understanding of ideas. You know, we did this with our kids. There was a lot of books that we read before they were ready for them. Obviously, there wasn't like mature content in it that wasn't appropriate for them, but maybe the words were a little bit bigger, the ideas were a little bit more complex. And I found that this has actually really benefited my kids because they have really strong vocabularies and they have a pretty wide knowledge of different stories in classic literature. Another thing I would recommend is to get plugged into a local homeschooling community. If at all possible, there are also virtual ones. So if you live in an area where you're having trouble finding homeschooling families, you can always find one online, but there's just something so special about meeting with people in person and knowing that you have a community that you can ask questions to, you can talk to more seasoned homeschoolers. They are going to be your greatest asset because they've walked the journey that you are about to 
embark on. And they've had failures, they've had you know learning lessons, and they're going to have so much wisdom to share with you. So recommend, obviously, get into community for you as the parent, but get into community for the kids. They will benefit so much from having other kids to learn alongside with, but also just to play with and to know. There is this big myth that homeschool kids are, they're unsocial, right? Like that if they're not in public school or private school, that they're going to be lacking in social skills. But I want to assure you that it is the farthest thing from the truth. We've spent quite a few years, you know, traveling the U.S. And my kids have had the opportunity to go to different um, museums and national sites and monuments and community spaces where they've had conversations with people from diverse backgrounds, uh, different age ranges, different belief systems. And because of that, my kids can have conversations with just about anyone. They feel comfortable in a lot of different social settings. I think that this is a really natural way for kids to learn versus being in a classroom where they're with only kids of their own age. It kind of narrows their their learning and growing when they're only with their peers. So we have found that Kids are not lacking in social skills who are homeschooled unless you're just staying home 24-7 and you're never getting out, which I wouldn't recommend. I promise you, your kids are going to be okay. Uh, Give them opportunities to get out in your community and have real conversations. You know, one of the things I've always done with my kids is equip them with the skills that they need to confidently lead themselves in a conversation no matter the age of the person that they are talking to. And I just give them little opportunities to do this. Like if they're at the library, instead of me asking for the book for them, I will have them ask for what they want. Or if we're ordering at a restaurant, I will have them order their own food. Or if we meet someone from a different culture, I will I will kind of encourage them, hey, why don't you ask how they say hello in their language or something of that sort. And, you know, there were times that my kids have been a little nervous to do this and they do it and you can just see that confidence coming onto their face because they're they're really proud of themselves for stepping outside their comfort zone. So that's just something I would encourage you to model for your kids and to teach them if you're also going to be homeschooling. One of the other reasons we have been so grateful for our homeschooling journey is that it has given us so much time freedom. I cannot tell you what a gift that has been. Homeschooling is the reason that we have been able to travel full-time three out of the last six years. We wouldn't have been able to do that if the kids were in school because, you know, it's, it's hard to pull them out of school. The schools get upset if you miss too much school. Uh, They get behind. And when you are homeschooling, you really have so much freedom. You have so many possibilities to spend your day how you want. And as an entrepreneur family, this has been so valuable to us. So I'll give you an example of what this looks like. Like, let's say when we were traveling full time, sometimes we would go to a new area and it just made more sense for us to go do something during the day, whatever it was, right? Like, We were trying to maybe hit daylight, we were at a national park, and it gave us the opportunity to homeschool in the afternoon, homeschool in the evening, skip that day of homeschooling, and just do a little bit more the next day. Nobody is really keeping track unless you live in a state or a country that does require a lot of strict tracking. But There are many places around the United States, and I don't really know about other countries, so I can't really speak to that, Uh, but there are places that they don't really require a lot of record keeping. And we've always lived in states that don't, and so this has given us the freedom to kind of do schooling our own way and on our own time schedule. It also just allows us to say yes more, right? So if there's an opportunity to go visit family or friends, we can say yes, and then we just take our school books with us. Uh, There's never that feeling of, oh, I sure wish we could do this, but we've got to wait till summer break, or we've got to wait till spring break, or we've got to wait till fall break. And speaking of those breaks, the cool thing about homeschooling is that you can go to popular destinations 
in the off season and you get to avoid the crowds because you don't have to wait till spring break or summer break to go to these really popular places. So when we were traveling full time and we knew we were going to like a really popular national park or something like that, we would try to plan it when we knew that attendance would be a little bit lower and then we would feel like we had the place to ourselves you know if there were guides or docents that were available with the experience you know you're getting a lot more of their attention and the kids are really learning from the environment around them which is just so invaluable as a homeschooling family so i think i could like keep talking about this for hours And I know I cannot address every question that you have, and I really wish I could, but I I truly hope that this episode encouraged you, maybe it satisfied your curiosity a little bit about how we do homeschooling, and also that it just gave you some direction if you are considering it and you want to start taking those initial steps, but you weren't sure where to go. I am going to include some links to some of my favorite resources in the show notes for this episode. So make sure you go to happierinmotherhood.com slash the dash podcast dash 136. And that will give you access to all of the links and resources I'm going to share. But before we wrap up, I wanted to share something really exciting with you that I am participating in. I was actually asked to be a speaker for an online summit for entrepreneurs. They were looking for a mom entrepreneur who could speak to balancing homeschooling with growing a business. And I was like, I am your gal. So I would love to have you join me at the Side Hustle to Full-Time Freedom Summit. This is happening next week. So if you're listening to this episode in real time, you got to skedaddle and get registered for the summit ASAP because it is happening January 15th through 19th. There's going to be four to five trainings every day that have the strategies that you need to see success in every area of your business thanks to these trainings that are going to be given by industry leaders. I will personally be giving a talk on my favorite time hacking secrets to see success in homeschooling and business. And this is going to be so invaluable for you if you're like, how am I going to do all of these things? Like, well, how can I homeschool and run a business? Listen to me. There is a path and I'm going to teach you how and the summit is completely free. So make sure you go to my show notes. If you're listening to this on a podcast app, you're going to see the link right there. It's super fast to register. It's just your name, your email, and then you're in and you're going to be able to access all of those trainings. Now, if you sign up for a VIP pass, There's going to be hot seat coaching available so that you can ask all your burning questions to the experts, including myself. So this is the perfect opportunity if you do have questions about homeschooling and you want to connect with me. I highly recommend that you attend this virtual summit and I really look forward to seeing you there. Okay. That is it for this episode. Please reach out. You have questions. You want to tell me what you think. You can find me on Instagram at happierinmotherhood or you can email me hello at happierinmotherhood.com. Thank you so, so much for being here and I will see you next week. 